Welcome to Wargroove. This unit guide episode is all about sea units, naval units, anything you could build from a port. Now, merfolk are the bread and butter of naval units. They are the naval infantry. They capture all the naval sea villages, completely surrounded by sea. In fact, merfolk are the only ones who can do that. That's amazing, so you're definitely gonna want a few of these guys early if the map you're playing on has sea villages. Now, on the sea, merfolk do great damage to harpoon ships. Additionally, they can attack things that are on the land, like this trebuchet or this stronghold, and if you do it at range, the stronghold won't hit you back. <laughs> the trebuchet is the opposite, you want to hit that guy at melee. Ranged units can hit you, but like if there was a sword here, it couldn't hit me. I'm in the ocean, I'm a sea unit. That gives me a level of invulnerability, which is pretty cool. Now, merfolk don't do a lot of damage to other naval units like turtles, but you can still finish them off or deal chip damage. But let's talk about merfolk on land. Merfolk on land are a little bit slower. You see, if I want to move across the land here, I, I can get one river tile, two plains tiles, and that's it. Way different from swimming five tiles forward. But I can still do all the land stuff, I can capture this village, I can attack no problem. In fact, merfolk on land can be used as discount archers. They're 150 gold cheaper than an archer, but they're way slower, they deal way less damage. Why would you ever do this? Well, if you were going for an all-in, it might be worth it. Also on river, they still get their crit condition, even though on the river they can be attacked, just like land units. So you've got to be a little bit careful with that. Merfolk overall are some great units, and you have to get a feel for whether you want to put them on land or keep them on the sea. That being said, they have a lot of uses, especially capturing sea villages, early in the game, and I'm going to do a more in-depth tutorial on when to use merfolk in what situations later on, but for now I hope that helped. Let's talk about turtles. Turtles are naval dominance units. They can't attack land, they can't attack air, they give you control of the sea. Watch them almost always kill a merfolk, do pretty big damage to the tanky barge, do great damage to the warship. Look at that, that warship's almost dead. Even the thing that counters turtles, supposedly this harpoon ship, takes a pretty big chunk from a turtle and can't counterattack it. However, turtles really shine when they get their crit condition. Look at that. Look at that. A weakened turtle would still destroy that merfolk. Look at this warship go down in one hit. Oh, that's insane. What? This harpoon ship counters me? Well, it's missing half its health. I don't know how it possibly counters me. Let's just take it out if we can. At the very least, it's a 3%, it's not doing anything. So, turtles will give you control of the sea. But when you have control of the sea, I wouldn't build any more. Harpoons are great, but they're so slow. Look at this, it can only move like two spaces in this light blue sea. That being said, the range is off the charts, literally. It's practically two, three blocks away, it's insane. On top of that, look at the damage it deals. That dragon is almost worthless now. I'm sorry, did you have a harpy? I blinked and it was gone. Your balloon seems to be missing almost all of its health and that witch isn't looking so great. Harpoon ships decimate. No, I'm sorry, that means reduced by 10th. Harpoon ships obliterate air units and also deal big damage to turtles. They only really attack air and sea and they're super slow. You probably want to build one of these on turn three or four and then slowly inch it to the center of the map where its insane range will prevent your opponent from using air units as long as you keep the harpoons safe. Build a couple early, get them into position, and dominate the air and sea. Alright, let's talk about warships. Warships deal very big damage to other naval units like merfolk, harpoon ships, and they move and attack just like harpoons do, which is pretty cool. Keep in mind that the counterattack range is a thing. Also, harpoon ships just do such insane damage to land units. I, I, I couldn't, it would take too long to put all the land units here and show them getting destroyed, so let's just do a giant. A giant will lose over half its health to the warship normally, but if I put it on beach, you know, beach, that terrain tile that's almost always on the border between land and sea, beach, the warship crits, and that giant is almost a speck. So if you want to siege land, warships are a little bit expensive, 
but they're insanely good at attacking land units, and they're pretty good against most naval units too. The barge is the transport unit of the sea. You can load two units into it, but unlike wagons and balloons, you can fit any land unit into a barge. Look, I'm just I'm shoving trebs and giants in here like there's no tomorrow. It's insane, and you can move them from one landmass to another. Fun fact, merfolk can actually fit into a barge. You just can't load and unload in the middle of the ocean because, you know, union regulations. Now, the barge is so insanely tanky, I want to prove it to you. Let's have these aquatic units try to get past this barge and into my territory. The turtle, the mighty turtle, the most powerful anti-naval units going in there and takes out half its health. Now let's get a merfolk crit on that thing. Boom! It's still there. And this 20 barge is just as good as a full health barge. It can still transport units. So this super cheap 200 gold unit can tank a turtle and a merfolk crit. That is amazing value right there. Alright, we've gone through every unit, every unit that can be built from a port. If I missed anything or you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. We're going to do air units next and then hideout units. That's all for now and welcome to Wargroove.